Let's pray for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Scripture lesson today is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 8. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and all who were in it, both young and old. They killed none of them but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Anihoam and of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the effort. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sister Eileen. Good morning, church. Okay, take out your sermon notes with me as we prepare uh, to listen to God's word. Uh, but before that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Saviour, mighty God. Lord, we give you all the praise, all honour and all glory. And Lord, this morning we ask for your spirit to just come and speak to us, minister to us. We open our hearts to hear your word about our lives, Lord. Teach us to know ourselves better so that we can be better people for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, as a pastor, one of the most common excuses I hear from people is this phrase, I don't feel like it. Pastor asks you to do something, no lah, I don't feel like it lah, Pastor. I want you to go DG, no lah, Pastor, I don't feel like going to DG lah. You know, I want you to uh, uh, come and serve, Pastor, I don't feel good serving this lah, doing this lah. You know, and that's what we always do. Isn't that true? Huh? You are correct, right? You know, I'll tell you honestly, if I get a dollar for every time I hear this phrase, you have a very, very rich Pastor. All right? And, you know, and, but we do it all the time. You know, because we, we, just, we, are, we are creatures, we are, we are emotional creatures. We are creatures who have feelings. And many times, you know, when we wake up in the evening and we say, I, uh, you know, I mean, after a hard day's work, we feel tired. We just say, I, uh, I just don't feel like going to church. I'm going to DG tonight. Or when we come in the morning, we wake up in the morning, like cool morning like this, when we are in the blanket, or when you had a late night. Okay, I slept very, I came back very late last night, I slept very late last night, and this morning I was lying in bed, my alarm rang, I offed it, and I just didn't feel like getting up. I just didn't feel like going to church. And I tell you, and, and many times we just feel like that. And how many times have we felt so tired that we just don't want to serve anymore? How many times have we felt so unhappy with a person? That because I'm so unhappy with you, so I decide to treat you badly. I decide to cut you off in my life. How often that because we don't feel the love, we don't feel the passion anymore, we decide to walk out on a marriage or on a relationship. Or how many times? Because that other person makes me feel young again. It makes me feel excited again. It feels so good to be with her, even though she's not my wife, but yet it feels so good. And we just go after it because it feels that way. How often have we made life-changing decisions because of our feelings. How often have we made decisions 
because we were so full of feelings at that moment, so joyful, we were so happy and we made a decision and later on we discovered, ah yeah, I don't have the strength to carry out that, de- that decision. You know, why, 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 why is it like that? Because you see, because our emotions, you know, our emotions, no matter how big they get, whether it is sadness, anger, happiness, joy, no matter how big it gets, ultimately it will leak. It leaks, it doesn't stay that way. You know, my son, you know, he, one of his favorite things is balloons. I think you remember a few Sundays back, he was running around the church with some of the other Sunday school children carrying a, a train of balloons, right? You all remember that? Some of you seeing after church, they were running around with balloons. And one of the things he, we discovered one day when we went shopping, we saw what we call a giant balloon. And he just begged and begged for us to get it. And so, ah, yeah, never mind, he got a cute face. So we got it for him, you can see there. That balloon is even bigger than him, man. And no matter, but you see, no matter how big that balloon is, no matter how hard you blow after a while, it leaks. It leaks. And it's back to what it was. And that's emotions, friends. That's feelings. Our emotions doesn't stay the same. It doesn't stay constant. One minute you're full of joy, the next minute it leaks and you're sad. You know, one minute you're doing something with passion, you're playing guitar with passion, the next minute you're just uh, you know, dreading to play guitar. You remember, right? I mean, for a very good example, your younger days, when you all were dating, husbands, when you were courting your wives, very easy, right? You go there, you stare at your wife from a distance, she will, from a distance, she look over her shoulder, she knows you're staring, she smiles and pretends she doesn't see you. And her heart goes ba 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 And then she turn and look again, stare back, bling 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 at you and then hide away. It's so easy, right, when the feelings were so high. Nowadays, I stare at my wife, she turn at me, what are you looking at? <laughs> feelings leaks. Feelings change. That's why we cannot, we cannot depend on our feelings. Whether we like it or not, whether good or bad, we cannot depend on our feelings to make decisions for us or to govern our behaviours. And so would you write me, the first point of your notes is this, is that irresponsible people act according to what they feel. Irresponsible people will act according to to what they feel, what their feeling says. That's how irresponsible people act. And so when we are happy, we smile. When we are sad, we frown. When we are moody, we become grumpy. When we are angry, we lash out. When we hurt, we hurt others back. We just follow, we just act according to how we feel. And a very good example of that was a story that was just read by our dear sister Eileen. You know, a story of David and his men in 1 Samuel. Before, let me just go give you, give you a bit of background. Before that whole thing took place, David was like a hero to these soldiers. David was like the man who could do no wrong. David was like their saviour, the, the, the man that they all look up to. And all the, every man around David was willing to give their life for David. They were willing to die for David. And that's how they saw David. They were willing to go to battle for him. They were willing to do anything for him. But then, and, and they were also scoundrels at that time. They were not heroes. They were raiders. They themselves were raiders. You know what raiders do? They go from village to village, ransack the village, take the money, take the women, take the cattle, take the cows, take the dogs, take whatever they take, and they run away. And so they do that to other people. And suddenly one day, when they came back, they suddenly realized someone did it to us. And that's what it says in 1 Samuel 30 verse 3. And when David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people were with him, lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Have you guys cried until you got no strength to cry anymore? Have you cried like that before? You cry and cry and cry until you got no more strength to cry and you still want to cry but you have no more strength. And these are grown men. Not grown men. These are grown warriors. Imagine, you all watch, you all watch wrestling, right? Wrestling, you all seen wrestling before, right? Imagine those people, like the, those wrestlers, Huck Hogan, all those type of people, you know? They come and they were crying and crying and crying until no strength to cry. That's how ridiculous it was. And what did they choose to react? Verse 6, Moreover, David was greatly distressed 
because the people spoke of stoning him. For the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters, because they were feeling so miserable. They were feeling so sad. This hero of theirs, this person whom they looked up to, whom they respected, whom they were willing to die for, but because they were feeling so sad, they were willing to stone him. But what did David do? Just because they were saying, feeling sad, they wanted to act according to how they feel. But look at David. Verse, verse 6. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. Or all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters. But, but, David strengthened himself in the Lord. David was a different breed. He, he cried together with them. He weeped together with them. He was as, as, as sad together with them. But David knew what to do. He strengthened himself in the Lord. You can, friends, in your notes, the first point, irresponsible people act according to what they feel. Responsible people act what is right despite how they feel. Irresponsible people will act according to how they feel. I feel angry, I act angry. I feel sad, I act sad. I feel happy, I act happy. I feel irritated, I act irritated. But responsible people will always act what is right, irregardless of what goes on in here. Whether I'm up, I'm down, I'm happy, I'm sad, yet I will do what the Lord requires me to do despite how I feel in here. Responsible people will always act what is right despite how they feel. So how do we become people who take responsibility for their feelings? How do we do that? How do we become people who are responsible and not irresponsible people when it comes to our feelings? Well, before we can do that, I need to describe, explain to you how our feelings work, how our feelings are connected to our hearts and how, how it all works. Okay, in John 7, 38, it says this, He who believes in me, as the scriptures say, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So here it says that, you know, your heart will flow rivers of living water. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a source of life. But then again, in Matthew 15, it says this, but the things that proceed out of the mouth comes from the heart, and those defile the man. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adultery, fornication, thefts, false witness, and slanders. So what's the Bible saying? On the one hand, it's saying it brings forth life. The other hand, it's saying it brings forth murderous thought, fornication, evil thoughts. There's one difference. Because the word, the phrases before it, when one believes and one puts faith, it brings forth life. When one speaks words that defiles, it brings forth death. In fact, friends, the engine of your heart, what comes out from your heart, what produces it? What produces the feelings that comes out from your heart? It all depends on how we behave. Let me explain. You can write in your notes first. The first is this. What you do dictates what fills your heart. I'll explain later. You just write it down. What you do dictates what fills your heart. What fills your heart dictates how you feel. Get me? What you do, you see, friends, what you do will fill, will fill your heart with, that, with, that, with that, 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 that emotion, that feeling, that values. And what fills your heart will dictate what, how you feel. You feel happy, you feel sad. And how you feel will dictate what you do. Confusing, right? Explain this. First, you have an action, all right? You have an action. That's what you do, all right? I, 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 I don't like Pastor Danny's face, I slap him. Pia! That's an action. So I took an action. And by the, act, the actions that I do will fuel the values that my heart will keep. What my heart values, what my heart treasures, it fills the conditions of my heart. And, but my heart, and so whatever my heart is filled with, it will produce the feelings in me. And because the feelings in me feels a certain way, I will then act according to how I feel. So it's a vicious cycle. Let me give you an example to explain. I grumble. So when I make the act of grumbling, 
grumbling. Ayah, this service so so boring lah. Ayah, this pastor talk too too long lah. Ayah, this church member never smile at me lah. Ayah, this aircon so not too cold lah. This aircon too hot lah. We like to grumble. We grumble, 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 grumble. And when we grumble, what we do is we feel it. We are filling our hearts with disappointment. We are filling our hearts with values of discontentment. And because my heart is now filled with disappointment, it is not filled with uh, discontentment, I begin to feel unhappy. I begin to feel discouraged with life. I begin to feel like nothing is worth it. Everything is lousy. Everything is no good. I begin to feel down. And because I feel life is useless, is hopeless, everything is nothing, I then crumble some more. You see the cycle? That's how it goes. You know? Or maybe because, you, or another example, you, know, you, look, you go to the office, you're working, and then suddenly you see a pretty little thing pass by and you feel attracted to it. And because you feel attracted, you keep looking at it. And the more you look, that's the action of looking and staring. You're filling your hearts with lust. You're filling your hearts with desires. And because of that, you begin to feel more urges, you begin to feel more attraction. And because of that, the more you will look, the more you will stare, the more you will desire. And so it's a vicious cycle. When you get angry and you give in to your anger, either you throw a tantrum or you keep a silent mood or you lash out at the person, what you're doing is you're filling your heart with malice and anger and bitterness towards that person. And because my heart is filled with malice and bitterness for that person, the next time I see that person, automatically the feelings of anger comes out. The feelings of irritation comes out. The feeling of frustration comes out. And because I feel irritated when I see you, I then lash out at you again. I scold you. I do whatever. I cut you off again. You see the cycle we go through? Because of the way we, we are made. And that's what happened to David's men. They came... They felt hopeless. They saw what happened. They felt hopeless. And because they felt hopeless, it led them to cry like babies. And they were crying like babies. And because they were crying, their babies, they filled their hearts with despair. With like, you know, like, 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 like there's no meaning in life. They filled their hearts with despair. Although it doesn't take brains to discover that these are all soldiers and warriors, you know. Go and rescue them. Like you're warriors by yourself. But because they were so bitter in crying, their hearts were only filled with despair. Because their hearts were filled with despair, they needed an outlet to blame someone. And so the feeling or the need to justify, to avenge or to blame fell on David and so they wanted to stone him. You see how that cycle works? And see friends, the problem is this. You can't, it's very difficult to break this cycle. Because you see, hey, go back, go back, go back one side, go back, okay. You see, your action will always fill your heart. Whatever you do, you can't change that. You can never change that. Because whatever you do adds value to your heart. Your heart doesn't decide for itself what to think and what to feel, you know. Your heart depends on what you do. What you practice, what you do, is what fills the value into your heart. You can't change that. That is, that is fixed. And what your heart is filled with, that is how you will feel. You can't change that either. You can't change that. That's how, you will, that's how you will feel. But there's one area that you can break the cycle. And that is what you feel you don't necessarily have to do. What you feel you don't have to do. And this part, you can discipline. The rest, you can't change. That's how you're designed. That's how you're made up. You can't change that two parts. But the only part you can change the only part of the cycle you can break is I don't do what I feel. You can discipline your feelings. The feelings will be there, but you can discipline it, you can suppress it, you can discipline your actions. And when you learn to do that, you begin to break that cycle. But let me tell you, it's difficult. It's very difficult. You know why? Because all our lives... We have been creatures who follow our emotions. We have been creatures of feelings all our lives. Ever since young, look at these little kids. You know, since when we were a child, we do the same thing. You know, we get upset, we get, we, there's something we want, we don't get, we throw tantrums. 
we cry, we scream, we say, no, I want, I want, I want, I want. And, the, and over, over your, all your father say, no, no, no. You cry even louder, you scream even more. And finally, the mother lets kiss into the, to the child. And so what do we tell? The child learns, okay, give in to my feelings, I'll get what I want. Give in to my feelings, I'll get what I want. And we bring this whole attitude to adulthood. Yeah, we don't throw tantrums by screaming and crying, but we still throw tantrums by silent treatment, by cutting people off, by giving you a dirty look, by, by, by showing my irritation at you, by manipulating you. We still do that. And because we always like to throw tantrums, we never learn to control our tantrums. We are, we are so, 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 it becomes so automatic. How I feel is how I will act. But we can discipline it. We can control it. And things that work for us as a child will work against us as an adult. As a child, you throw tantrum to get what you want. Yala, parents say, okay, la, they are child, you are cute, you get it. When you're adult and you start giving in to your emotions all the time, you start follow, throwing tantrums according to your emotions, what you result in is you cut people off. People will stay away from you. You strain relationships. You strain people around you. So what worked for you when as a child will be to your detriment when you're an adult. And that's why many of us suffer the things we suffer today because we never learn to break this cycle. And we need to break this cycle in order to protect our hearts from being filled with the wrong things. So you see, friends, when you break this cycle and your actions are now the right actions despite of what you feel, you're now filling your hearts with the right values with the right feelings. And because your heart is now being filled with the right values, your feelings begins to change. Your feelings begins to, dif- to be different. And so, so, let's say if you're angry with a person and you feel like lashing out, but you don't. You don't do what your feeling says. Instead, you pray for that person. You bless that person. You love that person. And what happens then? Your heart begins to change. Your values goes into your heart. And before you realize, your feeling also change. That's why it's so important to guard your hearts. That's why the Bible says, in the next point, you know, is learn to guard your hearts. Learn to guard your hearts. Proverbs 4.20 says this, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart for they bring life to those who find them and healing for their whole bodies. See, what Solomon is saying is, listen to these words. Listen this very careful. Because if you get this right, you get this right, it brings life to you. It brings healing to your whole body, to that whole cycle. It brings healing to you. What is it that you must learn? Verse 23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. It determines the, your, the, the kind of person you'll be. It determines your relationships with people around you. It determines your destiny. It determines everything about you. Above all else, guard your hearts from those actions, from actions that will fill your heart with the wrong values. You know, there was this celebrity you know, a lot of us, okay, before that, a lot of us, we learn to guard a lot of things, you know. We guard our health. We eat good, we don't eat fat, we don't eat cholesterol, you know. I went to visit a, a, a member, a member invited me for uh, dinner one day. And she was telling me how, uh, no, 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 not her, the husband was telling me how the wife cooks chicken by scraping off all the skin, and not only scraping off all the skin, but taking a knife and scraping off every single fat from the chicken. Sounds just like my mother. And that's what they do. A lot of times we guard our health. We guard our bodies. We guard our houses. We guard, our, we guard so many things. But one thing we always don't guard is our heart. Above all else, guard your heart. But today, many of us, we guard all else except our heart. That's why a, a famous celebrity, John Marriott, he was going through life and he was feeling very emotionally down and he's not like happy the, or the kind of person he's becoming. And so one day he went for his own retreat and he, he wrote something that's very profound. He said something like this. I can't remember the actual words, but he said something like this. He said, celebrities 
will pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to, secu- to buy security for their homes. Higher bodyguards, CCTV, everything. They pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to buy security for their home. But yet they will wake up every morning and read the internet to see all the negative things that people say about them. You pay hundreds and thousands to secure your home, to guard your home. But you forfeit everything by letting them into your heart. You, you, you protect your house, but you still let them in to your heart. And that's what we do. And we wonder why we are so easily moody, irritable, angry, depressed, excited. You know, because we never learn to guard our hearts. And to do that, we need to discipline our hearts. We need to discipline, we need to discipline our, sorry, not, we need to discipline our actions. So that our actions do not follow our feelings. How do we do that? Number one, in your notes, number one, act according to what God values and not how you feel. Act according to what God values and not how you feel. Luke 12.33 says this, Make yourself purses which do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near nor moth destroys, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, it says make for yourself purses which do not wear out. What purses? Purses is what? Purses are, is places where you store things of value, where you store your treasures. And so what God is saying is that you need to store what you value need to be right. You need to write, store the right values, unfailing treasures in heaven, in your purses. Unfailing treasures means the things that God values. What God says is valuable. That's the things I need to value. That are the things I need to do, I need to act, no matter how I feel. That's what I need to do in life. Even I'm not happy about it. Even I feel sad about it. Even I feel tired about it. Even I feel fed up about it. Yet, those are the things I need to do because I know why, because I want to, because I feel like it. No, because God says it is important. Because God says it is valuable. I'll be honest with you. I'll be very open with you, even though I'm your pastor, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll be transparent with you this morning. There are days, you know, when, when we were dating, when we were, me and my wife, when we were dating, when we were courting, like I say, you know, you stare at her, she blushes. You look at her one, you look at her from a distance, she feels very shy, her heart goes bop, 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 bop. But after the years has gone by, there are days when things are not so good. There are times when things, the atmosphere is not so good. And I'll be very honest with you, that there are days and there are times when I have no feeling of love left for my wife. I do not know where it's gone. I look and search my heart, Lord, where is it? It's gone. I try, I want to, but it's not there. There's no feeling. The heart doesn't beat anymore. The palms don't get sweaty anymore. The feelings are just gone. There's no feelings. And there are days, maybe days when she's in a bad mood or days when I'm in a bad mood when I just, when I just feel like saying, Ayo, enough, lah. let's go, let, let me just walk out. I just feel like it. And the feelings are just there. And I just really don't feel like living. And I just feel like giving a piece of my mind and just saying the things that I know will hurt her so much and just cut her into pieces. And I just feel like doing it. But but I don't do it. Because I know in those times when I feel the most, those are the times when I need to discipline myself the most. I, need to, I know that I need to act according to what God values and not what my feeling values. And so even though I f- don't feel like it, I will force myself to say I love you. I will force myself to give her a hug. I will force myself to kiss her on the cheek, to massage her, to do things that will show my love, even especially when I don't feel like it. And friends, let me tell you, when I do that, I break that cycle. That feelings, I break it. Because when I do it, I'm filling my heart 
with the values of God, that she is more important than any than all these feelings. I'm filling my heart with the value of loving your wife as you love yourself. I'm filling my heart with the value of what the Bible says to always love the wife of your youth. And I'm filling my heart with it. And guess what? After that, the feelings come back. The feelings come back. The heart begins to beat again. The palms become sweaty again. She begins to smell much nicer again. Have you smell your wife, husbands? You don't smell your wives, ah? Huh? Ayo, I can smell her from a mile away. I know there's a smell. Ah, my wife is here. And that feeling comes back again. And I just embrace her. And then, although I may first, my first embrace may be mechanical because I force myself. But when I do that, my heart changes, my feeling changes. That embrace becomes an embrace full of love and emotions. You see how you break that cycle? You always do what you know God wants you to do, whether you feel like it or not. Whether you feel like going to DG or not, no, that's what I know. I know that's what God wants me to do. And that's what I do. When I was young, I was tired in my working world. I was tired. I work until midnight shift. I work until 8 o'clock at night and I'm tired. I haven't had my dinner, but I know I have to go. So I drive to the disciple group, cell, cell group, attend the cell group. After cell group finish at 10 p.m., I drive back to work and work and continue work until 1 a.m. in the morning. Do I like doing it? No. But because I know that's what I have to. That's what God values. Do I feel like going to church every day? No. Do I feel like preaching every Sunday? No. Do I feel like driving all the way to Sagama and preach and come back midnight last night and come and preach to you this morning? No. But because I know that is what God values, I do it. And when I do it, I feel great after that. I feel energized. I feel the power of God. Why? Because I break that feeling, that action to feelings. I break that cycle. So friends, always learn to act according to what is right and not how you feel. And finally, number two, the last point. Cultivate a habit of praise and worship. Cultivate a habit of praise and worship. You know, one person who probably understood this principle more than anyone else in the Bible is none other than David himself. That's why David was able to strengthen himself in the Lord. You know why? Just read the Psalms. The Psalms are filled with David's emotions. It's filled with David's frustration. You know, the Psalms are filled so much, you know. David will say there, you know, Oh God, you look like you feel like you're so far away from me. Lord, how you disappoint me. Lord, these people are going to kill me. Lord, please kill them. Please destroy them. Please let their enemies destroy them so badly until they have no more children. They have no descendants. Just look at the curses that David uttered against his enemies. They are all in the Psalms. David writes them all out. And you know, some people look at it and say, My goodness. How can that be in the Bible? But friends, David is one person who knows. He acknowledges his feelings. He knows how he feels. But he doesn't act according to it. He recognizes his feelings and he takes responsibility for them. And that's why he says in Psalms 42, after all the curses on all the people, he says, Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him. You see, friends, something happens when we praise and we worship God in the midst of our, when we don't feel like it. Something happens. It changes our heart. It fills our hearts with the love of God. It fills our hearts with God's passion. It fills our hearts with God's peace, with God's joy. And then it changes our feelings. And although I feel mis- we feel miserable, but when we learn to praise the Lord, it fills our heart with joy and our feelings become feelings of joy. And that's why we start our services every morning by praising and worshipping God. And some of you come in here sad and miserable, after praising you feel okay. Some of you come in, you still feel miserable because you never praise and worship. You just stand there and you sing. You just stand there and look around. You don't worship. You don't praise. And you don't worship the Lord. May I encourage you to learn to praise and worship the Lord. Even when you don't feel like it. You know, because something changes. Just, just worship the Lord, you know. When you feel down, when you feel angry at someone, 
Let's take a time out and worship the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Ah, yeah, even the father is an idiot, like God, but great is your faithfulness. No, 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 no. He's, he, I, I hate him. Morning by morning. No, 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 definitely. But good mercies, I pray. I just worship the Lord. Just sing. And as you force yourself to worship, and you force yourself to sing praises to God, and you force yourself to just look at God's glory, it changes your feelings. It changes your heart. I just want to close with this illustration. And, I hope, and if, you, if there's nothing else you remember today, just remember this. So you can understand what it means to praise the Lord. Remember this class from the last two weeks ago? Let's say this is your feelings today. And maybe you had a bad morning. Maybe your wife said something nasty to you. And, you just don't, and you're just angry with her. Your husband did something to disappoint you. And you're just so angry with them. And you see the color, the disappointment, and you just feel so hurt, so frustrated. But we need to break that cycle, that feeling of anger, despair, unwantedness. As you sit there and you begin to praise and worship the Lord. Lord, you are so great. See the color changes? Lord, I just worship you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, you are just such a great. You are so awesome. You are so beautiful. Doesn't matter what my wife make to me, did to make me feel angry, but Lord, you are just so beautiful today. And I just worship you. And I praise you, and I glorify you, and I give you all the praise, all honor, all thanks, all glory, for you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord. I just worship you this morning, regardless how I feel, Lord. But yes, Lord, I worship you, for you deserve it, for you are the one, you are the one, Lord, you are the one. How beautiful, how great, how wonderful you are. And it clears every feeling of doubt, every feeling of despair, every feeling of hurts, of unlove, of bitterness. It cleanses it all away. Hallelujah. You know, we just need to learn to praise God. No matter how you feel, just learn to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You seem so 